What's up everyone, it's your boy Danny Vega, AKA Danny V, and I am super late to the show. I don't know if you can hear, I'm kind of nasally because I came down with a bug, that's right. I watched Zack Snyder's Justice League Thursday when it came out, and all of a sudden I had a tickle tickle in my throat, and the end. It's a small bug, I'm getting better as the days go by. Thank God it's not the Rona, because if it was the Rona, Jesus, I don't even think this when it came out at all but now that i can talk hopefully you guys are still interested in what i got to say about this so zack snyder's justice league did i like it did i hate it or did i absolutely love it let's jump into it in this video Now, before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell button for more future videos. We can't forget about my sponsors, DJ Venom, that's right. He's an amazing artist here in the Orlando area. Make sure to go to his SoundCloud to check out all of his music and make sure to go to his Twitch, DJ underscore Venom, for all your gameplay needs. If you have a sweet tooth just like me and you love tasty, delicious treats, go to Sweets by Award. They're a fantastic company in the Orlando area. That's where I get all my delicious treats and sweets for my family. Make sure to use my discount code Danny V for 15% off your next order. Now before we start this video, as always, this video is full of spoilers. If you don't want it to be spoilers, get out now while you can. Start in three, two, one. All right, so let's jump right into it. Zack Snyder's Justice League, the Snyder Cut. Man, <coughs> you see, I'm dying. Help me, help me. I'm telling you, I did not believe that I would like this, especially if you saw my last review on the trailer. I was like, I don't know, man, but I was wrong. This shit was amazing. Let me tell you something. I didn't watch the Batman v Superman extended edition or ultimate edition, however you call it, the Snyder cut of Batman v Superman. And people said I should watch it because it makes a lot more sense. It is way better than the theatrical release. Now that I saw the Justice League Snyder cut, I think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Help me, please, Jesus. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do that because if it's just as good as this, holy shit. Again, I wasn't a believer until I saw it. Zack Snyder being a DC fan and seeing that he had full creative control of this, I can see that he knows what he's doing. I love the changes to it. I love the changes that like the history scene actually shows you who the Green Lanterns are. The history scene shows that it's Darkseid instead of Se Steppenwolf. You actually see who the Lantern is that fought Darkseid. And not only that, it was Darkseid before he was Darkseid. If I'm not mistaken, is Ux... I, I don't know how to say it. U-X-A-S... Ux-A-S... Ux Fuck. But yeah, it was Darkseid before he's Darkseid, but then not only that, you see that it took everyone to fight against Darkseid. It looked like he passed out or died, and that's great to me because if you're into the comics, you know that Darkseid's true form is he can't be long in this reality. It'll destroy reality. That's why he has the avatars that we see. So no matter what, if you kill Darkseid, he's not really dead. So I, I was like, man, this is fantastic. There was blood everywhere, like blood, and then he chopped off the Green Lantern's hand. I was like, oh shit. I mean, this was brutal. This was dark, and I love it because it's not like Marvel. Marvel's like, ha, ha, we can't show blood here, kids. And I love the fact that Zack Snyder's like, no, there's gonna be blood. It's, it's a darker movie. I love that it's a darker movie. DC has those dark stories that I'm absolutely loving, man. Every character in the Snyder Cut, every character played his part. Everyone belonged, and it showed that everyone is super important to each other. Like, each individual is important. Like, not just Superman being the strongest, you know, like, Cyborg's very important. His story, my God, was incredible. It reminded me a lot of Justice League Doom. I don't know if you ever saw that animated movie, but it was just amazing. I, I love the fact because Cyborg was, like, the key in there, and Cyborg was the key here. I thought it was fantastic because Cyborg was the only one that could save Superman from Batman's Kryptonite bullet. I'm telling you. When I saw, like, how he can do all these things, I was like, you know what? That's why he left the Teen Titans and joined the Justice League. He deserves it, man. And his story was incredible, incredible character development. The Frankenstein monster of the group 
insane. But then not only that, Flash's story is very important too and his abilities as well. My God, the fact that Flash saved everyone at the end, oh my, listen, I've learned a lot more about Flash because of my boy DJ Harley. I know you guys have heard me talk about him before. When it comes to DC and like anime that I don't know, I go to DJ, DJ knows his shit. And I became really interested in the Flash because of DJ. I mean, I would I was not interested whatsoever. I'm like, yeah, Flash is cool, whatever. And in Justice League, I thought he was funny. The animated series, I thought he was funny. I was like, all right, cool. But DJ really got me into like each one of the Flashes. And so to see the whole spectrum of all like the Flash's powers, to see that play out in the movie, that he's the reason why they survive, oh, was incredible. Because at the end, when the Unity forms and it blows up not only does the earth blow up if you see where flash is at because he can move so fast it's like the outside perspective of watching in space earth blow up even though he's on earth it's super incredible and he's telling himself like, i gotta break my one rule i gotta break my one rule and he runs as fast as the speed of light but yes he's way faster he's like i gotta go faster than the speed of light i gotta go fast he legit reverses time to save everyone like Legit, Superman is dead. Like when he starts slowing back in and you see Superman's skeleton and then like muscles. I was like, holy shit, even Superman died. What the fuck? I was in shock and awe that everyone played their important part. Wonder Woman, my God, her introduction was so badass. Like I forgot how good it was, but then it's a little longer. And I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, to show that she's super fast. And then not only that, when she fought against Superman, when they headbutted each other, I thought that was fantastic because the thing that I hated about the Josh Whedon Justice League, I felt like Wonder Woman had to spam her gauntlet power. I was like, that's freaking stupid. And the reason why I thought it was stupid because in the comic books, you know that Wonder Woman, even though she's not stronger than Superman, she's just as strong and fast, which is incredible. So it's like, I love that in this one, she doesn't spam her bracelets too much and she's actually, you know, going ham and I love it. I was like, all right, that was, again, incredible. Zack Snyder knows what he's doing. Speaking of introductions, Flash's introduction when he goes and saves, I guess it's Iris West, I believe? When he saves her, whoa! That scene had my jaw dropping. I was like, my God, that's incredible. I love that introduction. We don't get that in the weeding, you know, Justice League. And man, it makes all the difference. It's four hours long. And it didn't feel like it was four hours long. Now, listen to me very clearly. I don't think anything should be four hours long, period. Like, I got shit to do. I have these reviews and other shit, you know, my normal life. I don't get paid by YouTube. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just a normal guy doing this jerking off you know the essentials even though i would have liked to see it in episodes kind of like a thing on you know hbo max like netflix or some shit i was like man four hours blew by i didn't even think it was four hours just put it to you this way as much as a marvel fan that i am and i love endgame endgame when i was in the theater i was like jesus christ i was like i have felt the three hours i was holding in i have to pee i was like my god man when it started dragging the endgame i was like yep i can pee now and then I went and I came back and I didn't miss a damn thing. And this one, it flowed so well that you really couldn't tell it was four hours. It just whizzes by. That shows you the flow and Zack Snyder knows what he's doing. I love that Batman is Batman when he's fucking doing his martial arts and everything else. That is the Batman that I feel. The only thing that I have, like there's a couple of things that I really didn't like and we'll get into it. And one of the things about Batman that I didn't really like in this one is that the only thing that Batman didn't feel like Batman to me was that in a lot of iterations, Batman is the world's greatest detective. So I felt like Batman should have known a lot of shit, not because of like weed and cut that you have like the boxes everywhere and then he's like piecing them together and Diana's like, I'm impressed. But no, like seriously, I feel Feel like he should have known a lot of stuff like either while diana has the arrow and she's looking at the thing and he's he pops up behind her she's like jesus christ how did you get in he's like i'm batman like that you know what i mean like for christ's sake there's an animated movie that he takes hal jordan's ring and then he's just like you mean this ring he's like wait what he's like i was just off guard he's like you won't be able to do it again and he's just like not if i want to he's like come on man Batman is Batman. I I I miss those elements. I want to see that in the DCEU, but you know, that that's just my only critique on it is that I want more detective work. I want like I hope Rob Pattinson just looks like he's going to be a detective, but 
I hope they show like he is super smart and super talented. And then the other thing is though, Batman building gadgets, cool. You have, instead of like a Lucius Fox, you have Alfred doing it. But in the comics, Batman for a human being is abnormally strong too. Besides being super smart, he's stronger than your average bear. He's not a superhero strength, like a Superman or you know Wonder Woman or anything else, obviously. But he's stronger than the average bear. Like, let's just put it that way. Like when Christian Bale had those enhancements that like he hit the brick wall and it broke. That's supposed to be like Batman without anything. I'm just saying. So yeah, but other than that, it was great to see. I, I love Ben Affleck as Batman, to be honest. And I love that look. I love the Batman Returns look. No, not Batman Returns. Jesus Christ. I love the Dark Knight Returns look. <laughs> Batman Returns is Michael Keaton. <laughs> I love the Dark Knight Returns Look, man, I, I really do. That whole comic and that whole animated movie is absolutely incredible. So I love that that's in here. And speaking of looks, man, there are a couple of different things that I love in his. So Steppenwolf obviously looks way better than he did in the Whedon cut. That armor, man, makes him look menacing. And even though I said that I like the more humanoid version of Steppenwolf in the comics, in this one, it played out great. And especially that when the armor went off, you saw like his real alien head and face. I was like, man, I was, <laughs> it almost reminded me of like a, a hammerhead shark face for real. And I was like, man, all right, that's that's pretty nuts. And And, and it's great because it gives you that feel that he's not from this world. So I liked it a lot better than I thought I would than when I saw it in the trailer. And what's really cool too is that like he used it to like break arrows off of him and then as defensive. I'm just saying, man, this, this Steppenwolf is awesome. His power looks more insane. He was more menacing. And I love the fact all he wants to do is go home because he betrayed Darkseid. The thing I loved about this the most out of anything, out of any movie that has come out in Hollywood so far, the bad guys are the fucking bad guys, for real. They're not misunderstood, they're not, oh my god, they have a past, like, dude, Disney's Raya just came out and the same thing happened, the bad guys misunderstood. Are we fucking serious right now? Every movie that has come out so far is just like, oh, the bad guys misunderstood, boo hoo. Like, dude, I am tired of that shit. There are some bad eggs in this world, okay? And we need to see that. That was my big thing about Thanos. Thanos killed half the universe in the comic because he wanted to impress death because he loved death. That was it. There was no, oh, balance of the universe. None of that garbage. Dude, I love that dark side. It's just dark side. He's just like, I am here to take over shit and you are bowing down to me. He is Space Hitler, kind of like Frieza. Space Hitler. I love that. I know there's a terrible group of words, but I love the fact that he's just a bad guy and you need good guys to defeat the bad guy. There's no like, I'm going to show you my love. Give him a flower. He'll be okay. None of that. I'm so grateful for that. So Zack Snyder, thank you for that. Speaking of uh, Darkseid, Darkseid, okay, he looked way better than I anticipated. So when I saw him on the trailer, I was like, ah, I'm not really impressed with the CGI, but it looked a lot better in the final cut of the movie. And then not only that, man, dude, his Omega Beams, like he kills Aquaman, the Omega Beams kill people. Oh my God. I was like, dude, this is great. Now, does it have some downfalls? Absolutely. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. Black Suit Superman. I, obviously, you, you know me, what I said in my last video about Justice League, I am a huge Death of Superman fan. It's one of my favorite stories of all time. I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but my God. So I was so afraid that they're gonna do black suit Superman just for the hell of it and just to be different from the Whedon cut, which almost happens, but it doesn't. And I'm glad and I'm grateful how Zack Snyder did this. For me, I told you, the significance about Black Suit Superman in the comic is that he comes back, he doesn't have his powers, you know, he's guns a-blazing, and then he gets his powers back, obviously, when the last son of Krypton sacrificed himself and the power shoots into him fully restored. Now, in this one, though, this implied a lot of shit. The whole thing with Flash going back in time and warning Bruce Wayne about Superman, like, you were right all along, it was him, Lois Lane is the key, yada, yada, yada. And then in this instance, when you see Cyborg get the vision of the future, of the nightmare future of, you know, Darkseid killing everybody and then Superman is evil. I was like, holy shit. So this is what's happening. So the implications of Black Suit Superman, if you notice, he is not the same Superman that we thought. He wasn't Golden Boy. And what I mean is this, like when he shows up and Steppenwolf hits him, he's like, huh, not impressed. Boom, breaks the axe. 
That's not what Superman would normally do. Superman is the golden boy. He's the hope. And now he's talking shit. Then after talking shit, he beats the shit out of Steppenwolf. Not only does he beat the shit out of Steppenwolf, he beats the shit out of him to the point that it has Batman shook. If you look at Batman's face, he's like, what have I done? Because you just see that Superman's like, oh, mama, fuck, oh, oh, like Hulk smash. And he's just beating the living daylights out of Steppenwolf. Uses his beams to burn Steppenwolf's fucking horn off his head. Like, whoa, this shows that he is going towards that dark side. And even though, you know, we hear that both his dads, Papa Kent and also his <laughs> uh, Jor-El, talking to him. I thought, okay, cool, both of them talking to him would put some sense into him, but you see that he's still a little off. I love that. I love that it's just like, hmm, po is it possible that he could just, like, lose it? <laughs> I really loved it because, again, I thought Black Suit Superman, because, you know, he talks to Alfred, you're like, oh, well, he's Superman. Superman, why, why would you put him in a black suit? But then when you see what's happening, you're like, Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe, just maybe. Jared Leto's Joker. Amazing look, still a shitty Joker. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I didn't like it What's what? I liked the dialogue between him and Batman That was great But the fact that ah, 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 It sounds like an old man ah, ah, ah. I don't like Jared Little's Joker I love him as an actor I love him in 30 Seconds to Mars But Joker ain't it And that's just my personal opinion I, I'm serious I really think that we need someone better as a Joker And then the fact that he's just like Who's going to give you a reach around? Really, dude? That's it's more of a Deadpool joke. Like, ugh. I love the tension between him and Batman, and I love the fact that he's just like, when I was holding Harley Quinn in my arms and she was dying, she told me to kill you slow, and that's what I'm gonna fucking do. And especially that he's pushing the buttons of how he killed Robin. I love that tension, and I love the fact that you see Joker's almost shook, and he's like, <laughs> he almost got me. All right, yeah. That was cool to see that he had to team up with all the bad guys and everything. It just shows that it's leading to like an injustice movie. I love that. I love that they said that the anti-life equation was the power of the multiverse because, you know, it goes to show you how powerful um, it goes. But not only that, it ties into why Flash went back to warn Bruce in the first place. And then not only that, Jared's little Joker, even though I still hate that. Ah! Ah, oh my god, I want to strangle him. I wonder how many times in alternate timelines have you fucked us up because you don't have the cojones to die on your own. I was like, damn. But not only that, he said that Batman was the reason why Lois died. He's like, and how she suffered so. I was like, wait a minute. So this might tie into like an injustice story because we know that Joker ended up killing Lois Lane and the unborn child and then superman goes nuts and that's it we have evil superman so is it something similar like that i we don't know or does dark side actually kill lois like how they showed in the vision that superman's just holding her while she's like burned to a crisp and then dark side is just like join me and that that was it dude so everything that tied into it, again i thought it was fantastic man so the things that had my jaw dropping in this before i go into some things that i didn't like however so Jaw dropping moments. Martian Manhunter. I lost it. Holy shit. Even though at the end, when he talked to Bruce and he was just like, they call me the Martian Manhunter, I was like, man, I was hoping he was like, some people call me Jean. And I was like, what? And I don't like that he doesn't have his accent, but still, it was so cool, man. I was like, damn it. Uh, I wanted to see more of him when I saw him. I thought that was great. When they were setting up the Justice League itself, when they went into the mansion, he's just like, a table, room for more. I was like, yes, awesome. Cyborg's story was absolutely incredible. I'm telling, I'm, I'm telling you right now, that was a jaw-dropping moment for me because it goes to show that he can do everything with a thought and that burden, that responsibility. But great power comes great responsibility is definitely on his shoulders in this movie. And his story, you know, with his mom and his dad and the whole full character development of Cyborg, man, that was an amazing moment for me. And to come all the way around to how he thought he was broken, then the final act, he's like, I am not broken and splits the unity, incredible. But my favorite, I said it earlier, but my favorite of all time jaw dropping moment in this was Flash reversing time, man. When I saw the earth explode, I gasped really hard. I was like, holy fucking shit. And then just to see 
everything come into play. You know, he gets hit, he's kind of a little bitch, and you're like, oh man, really? But then he has his big moment. It was my favorite out of all, honestly, possibly out of all superhero movies. That's one of my favorites, if not my favorite of all time. Besides, you know, Cat picking up Mjolnir was amazing too. Things I didn't like about it, uh, like I told you about Batman, I really didn't like that he's not like the world's greatest detective. I still feel like this whole thing was rushed. For DC, I think WB just tried to just like, come on, let's compete with Marvel. And you could have totally did a different formula to do that. To me, I feel like you could have done what the Justice League animated show did and also their first appearance, like I mentioned in my last video, that you could have them all come together as just you know, superheroes, they're all not listening to each other. They finally find teamwork to beat the bad guy, which was, you know, the starfish monster. And then after that, you can go into progress of how their characters develop and grow with each other. And then you can also do origin stories. I thought that'd be cool because if you had a moment like that later that they don't necessarily still trust each other and have like in Justice League 2 or 3 or whatever, and then you had that moment and then after that, you can go into people's like origins or whatever. It'd be cool. Or tell each other their origins, you know, while getting to trust each other, something like that. But it's almost like reverse of what Marvel did. It still would have panned out. But overall, man, I'm just nitpicking. Overall, I thought this was incredibly well done. Definitely one of my favorite superhero movies. And that's a big difference from the Joss Whedon cut that we saw so to wrap this all up Zack Snyder's Justice League overall was very well done it's one of my favorite superhero movies of all time like I said I loved how everyone played their part everyone was super important I feel like they did a better job in that than the first Avengers movie the first Avengers movie I feel like they didn't really capitalize on everyone's individual strengths but Zack Snyder's Justice League definitely did that so those are my thoughts if I forgot to talk about anything, please let me know down in the comments below so we can discuss it. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell button for more future videos. I love you. Be safe. Talk to you soon.